Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I'm going to look at these nine molecules and decide whether those molecules are aromatic, non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. But before we go there, let's quickly review the rules of aromaticity. In order to be aromatic, molecule needs to be cyclic. So for instance, this is a cyclic molecule, while this one is not cyclic. Next, the molecule needs to be planar or flat. For instance, something like that, that is planar, while this is not planar. Next, the molecule needs to be fully conjugated within the cycle, which means that every atom within the cycle needs to be either sp2 or sp hybridized, so it is going to be capable of resonance. So something like benzene, for instance, is fully conjugated, while this molecule is not fully conjugated because we have an sp3 hybridized atom right over here, which breaks the chain of conjugation, making this molecule not conjugated. And finally, we are going to check for the number of electrons within our conjugated system, which is sometimes referred to as the Huckel's rule, and it states that the aromatic system needs to have 4n plus 2 electrons in the pi system. And the important thing to keep in mind here that the number n over here does not correspond to anything within the molecule itself, n is just a whole number from 0 to infinity. So your n can be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, etc. Which means that the number of electrons that you are going to see for the aromatic compound is going to be 2 electrons, 6 electrons, 10 electrons, 14 electrons, etc. for as long as you are going to be counting your n as the whole number. Now, it's always a good idea to check the factors that are going to determine your aromaticity in this order, because if we are going to break 1, 2 or 3, then it doesn't matter how many electrons you're going to have. If you're going to break one of the first three rules, then your molecule is going to be non-aromatic. So I'm going to put it as a little side note over here on the right side. Now, another situation that you can potentially run into is when you have the wrong number of electrons in your system. If instead of 4n plus 2, you only have 4n electrons, so in other words, you have four electrons or you have eight electrons or 12 electrons, etc. Well, those systems we're going to refer to as anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic molecules are typically extremely unstable and we don't want to see our molecule as an anti-aromatic. However, it is a typical exam question when you are tasked to identify whether your molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic or non-aromatic. So make sure you know the difference between the non-aromatic compounds and anti-aromatic compounds. Non-aromatic compounds break one of the first three rules and then the number of electrons don't matter, while the anti aromatic compounds, they obey the first three rules and the number of electrons is different from the aromatic ones. Aromatic molecules, they have 4n plus 2 electrons, so 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, etc., while anti-aromatic molecules, they have 4n electrons, so 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. Now, keeping all this information in mind, Let's move to our first example here. So going down our laundry list, we can see that this molecule is cyclic. It is a relatively small molecule with a lot of sp2 hybridized atoms, so most likely it is also going to be planar. Now, when it comes to the full conjugation inside of this molecule, we're going to run into a little bit of a problem, because this atom over here, well, that is CH2, and as a CH2 group connected to two other carbons, that is going to be an sp3 hybridized species. So this molecule is not fully conjugated, not fully conjugated as a cycle, that is. So that means that we are breaking one of our first three rules, making this molecule non-aromatic. Now, moving to my next molecule, I'm seeing that this molecule is obviously cyclic, so I'm going to check off this requirement. Then we have an sp2 hybridized atom on every corner of this molecule, so it is going to be both fully conjugated and it is also going to be planar. Now, when it comes to the number of pi electrons that I have on this molecule, I'm going to include the electrons of the pi bonds, which is two electrons over here, two electrons over here, and two more electrons on that pi bond, which means that so far on my pi bonds, I have six electrons 
on the pi bonds overall. We also have an electron pair on the oxygen over here. However, this electron pair is localized and because of that it is not going to be a part of the resonance stabilized system, so we're not going to be including this electron pair. As a quick rule of thumb, remember that if you have a heteroatom, let's say my heteroatom is some sort of an X, and that X already has a double bond, then whatever electron pairs we have on that atom, they are going to be localized and we are not going to be using those. However, if I have my heteroatom, again I'm going to stick to some sort of X, and it does not have a pi bond as is, then we are going to look at the electron pairs that that atom has and we are going to use up to one of those electron pairs. So let's say I'm going to use one electron pair on the X if it has two and the other one is still going to be localized. So coming back to my example that I have above, the electron pairs on the oxygen are not going to be used because oxygen already has a pi bond, so they physically cannot be a part of that resonance stabilized system, which means that we only have six electrons on our pi system and six electrons does fit for n plus 2. If I solve the equation for n plus 2 equals 6, that is going to be true if my n equals to 1, which means that this molecule is aromatic. Now, moving on to my next example, this molecule is obviously cyclic, so that part is easy. Now, is this molecule planar? Well, that, my friends, is a very common exam trick, because this molecule looks like something else that you might have already seen before. The molecule that I have drawn here on the right side in orange, that is naphthalene, which is is an example of an aromatic compound, however the big difference here is that in my molecule of naphthalene I do have this bond in the middle of the molecule, while in the molecule that I originally have here on the left, well, we do not have a bond there. And if I do not have a bond there, it means that something got to be there and that something is our implicit hydrogens. And because these implicit hydrogens are forced to look inside of the molecule, they are kind of physically occupying each other's space if molecule is flat. So what molecule is going to do? It's going to twist itself out of the plane, out of the plane of conjugation, and it's no longer going to be planar. And because this molecule is not planar, it is going to be non-aromatic. Now my next example is cyclic, it is planar, it is fully conjugated as well, and when it comes to the electrons, we are going to first count the electrons on the pi bonds, so we have two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here. We also do have electrons on our nitrogens, I have one electron pair on the bottom nitrogen and I have one electron pair on my top nitrogen. However, just like in the previous example, since my nitrogen already has a pi bond, neither of those electron pairs going to be counted towards our pi electron count simply because those electrons are not a part of the pi system. So overall, what I have here is six pi electrons, which does fit into 4n plus 2 formula, making this molecule aromatic. Now my next molecule is very small, but don't let that confuse you. Small molecules can be aromatic or anti-aromatic or non-aromatic as well. We still need to apply our rules. So the first rule is to see whether the molecule is cyclic, and that is a three-membered ring, so yes, it certainly is cyclic. Now, is this molecule planar? Well, it's impossible to have three atoms and not have them on the plane, so of course it is going to be planar as well. Because of that, the molecule is also going to be fully conjugated. Now, when it comes to the number of electrons that I have in my pi system, these electrons that I have over here in the form of the negative charge, they can definitely participate in my resonance, I can move them around like so, which means that I am going to be counting those. So I have two electrons on my pi bond and I also have another two electrons in the form of this negative charge. So the total number of electrons that I have on this molecule is going to be four electrons. And we know that four electrons fits into the 
for n formula, which is definitely not aromatic, and for n corresponds to anti-aromatic compounds, which means that if I were to somehow synthesize this molecule or come up with some sort of a mechanism where that would be an intermediate, I would have to think twice about whether my mechanism is correct or not, because anti-aromatic molecules are incredibly unstable, and that means that this molecule should probably not be a part of my mechanism mechanism or whatever reaction I might be writing there. The next molecule, however, that I have here, whew, that's a dianion, so that looks pretty scary as well, but we are going to go through our rules and we will not let that two negative charges scare us. So the molecule is cyclic. A small molecule like that with a double bond will also be planar, like in the previous case because of that it's going to be fully conjugated. Now, when it comes to the number of electrons that we have here, well, we've got two electrons on the pi bond here, so I have these two electrons. Now, I do have two electron pairs that are just sitting on my carbons, and those electrons can participate in resonance if I push my electrons around like so or I can do it from the other electron pair, which is going to look something like that, which means that I am going to use both of those electron pairs in my count. So in this case, I have overall two electrons on the pi bond, two electrons on one electron pair, and two electrons that is coming from the other electron pair. So overall, I have six electrons over here giving me an aromatic compound. And while molecule like this is not going to be a frequent guest in your class, you are definitely going to see something of this sort on the exam when you are asked to determine whether the molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Instructors love confused students with charges, with heteroatoms, and things like that, so don't be scared by something like that, just go through the rules and figure out whether the thing is aromatic or not, without putting too much thought into how this uh, molecule is made or where it's coming from or what that molecule is all about to begin with. All right, moving on, I have this molecule over here. We have two cycles that are connected to each other, so we can consider them as one big conjugated system. So what I'm going to do here, I'm basically going to pretend that this molecule is something like one continuous cycle that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 carbons like that. Now, if I'm going to go down the laundry list of my factors, the molecule is going to be cyclic. Every carbon atom in my molecule is sp2 hybridized, so it is going to be planar, and because of that, the molecule is also going to be fully conjugated. Now, the only electrons that I have in my pi system are going to be sitting on my, well, pi bonds. So I'm just going to be counting electrons on the pi bonds, and I have a couple of electrons right over here, then two electrons on this bond, two electrons on this one, two electrons here, and two electrons here. So overall in this molecule, I am going to have 10 pi electrons. And using our 4n plus 2 formula, we can find that 10 electrons fits 4n plus 2 formula, where 4n plus 2 equals 10 if n equals 2. So this molecule is aromatic as well. An interesting factoid about this molecule, it is called azulene, and it is called so because of its deep blue color. If you see this molecule in real life, you will be really surprised by how deep that blue color is, and that a simple organic molecule like this one can actually have a color, because pretty much the vast majority of the molecules that you are ever going to encounter in organic lab, they're going to be either colorless, white, or maybe pale yellow, or something like that. So having a little bit of color is always a lot of fun. I used to work with azulene a little bit for my research practice, and this molecule is also incredibly unreactive, so while it is very colorful, it is kind of really boring because there is almost nothing you can do with that. This molecule also has a very high dipole moment, which is oriented towards the five-membered ring. Can you figure out why? Let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, let's look at our next example, which is a uh, 
What the heck is that? Well, that one is actually called borazine, and sometimes it is referred to as inorganic benzene. This is a rather interesting molecule because we don't seem to have any pi bonds here, well, whatsoever. However, every boron has an empty orbital, so I'm going to show those orbitals with little boxes. Every nitrogen has an electron pair on it. So what can happen here is that every nitrogen going to donate that electron pair to make a bond with boron and that essentially creates our pi bonds. So if I draw my resonance structure showing the movement of all of those electrons creating pi bonds, that's what I'm going to get. And this molecule very much like benzene, I will show a structure of benzene over here on the right side, is also going to be aromatic, although it doesn't have a single carbon in its structure. I think it's kind of cool, but I digress. Anyways, moving to my last example here, here is one of my personal favorite aldehydes, it's called furfural. And the part of the molecule that we are going to be analyzing here is going to be the ring. Remember that aromatic compounds, they are not just the ring by itself, the entire molecule with all of its substituents and everything that is hanging off the ring can be also classified as an aromatic compound. Just like this one can be classified as an aldehyde because I have an aldehyde functional group group here. So whenever you see something like that on the exam, the first thing that you will have to identify is which part of the molecule you are going to be looking at if the molecule has a lot of bells and whistles sitting on that. And in this case, we're just going to be looking at the ring and pretty much ignore the CO double bond that we have hanging off it. So inside of my ring, I have two pi bonds over here, and I also have an oxygen that is going to have some uh, electron pairs on it. It's going to have two electron pairs, to be more precise. And since this molecule is obviously cyclic, it is obviously planar and fully conjugated because everything here is sp2 hybridized, I am going to move to my um, electron count right away. So I have two electrons per pi bond, so I have two electrons over here, and I also have two electrons there. Now, we remember that when it comes to our heteroatoms, the number of electrons that we can use from a, any kind of heteroatom with the electron pairs is just one. So I am going to use one electron pair for my count, and I am going to discard the other electron pair. It is not going to be participating in my resonance, which means that overall I have six electrons in the pi system within the cycle here in this molecule, which makes this molecule aromatic. Now, going over the list of the rules and applying those to different molecules can be a little bit boring, but the thing is, when it comes to the aromaticity, we are going to give you the aromatic uh, versus non-aromatic versus anti-aromatic question on the exam, maybe on the first exam after you cover that topic in the uh, class, in your class, but after that, aromaticity is not going to be a an isolated subject that we are going to be testing. Rather, aromaticity is going to be something that you will have to recognize whenever you see, well, an aromatic molecule. And because of that, it is important to build up the skill so you can identify whether the molecule or part of the molecule is aromatic or anti-aromatic right away, so this way you will be more likely to uh, make the correct decisions during your mechanistic studies when you are writing the mechanisms for different reactions, and also catch different different uh, aspects of the chemistry where aromaticity can potentially be involved. So make sure you do a few practice examples now and then, so you're always ready for that exam, or you're always ready to catch that aromatic compound when you have one. And if you're still here, thank you for watching. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below, and if you learned something new today or you like this type of videos, hit that like button to help promote this video and help more students see it, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.